The Hadzabi children are fiercely independent and self-sufficient. However, like most kids, they love to play. The baobab tree is the Hudza's version of a jungle gym. They climb the trees like experts, and most of the trunks are hollow on the inside. They climb in and out of the tree trunks for entertainment, but they also know that bees love to build their hives inside these trees. Most kids will do anything for a sweet treat. The Hudza kids will climb to extreme heights with a burning branch in their hand to smoke out the bees. They will endure the pain from many stings from these bees in order to get to this honey. To me, this is admirable mental and physical toughness that you don't see in such young kids these days. At about five years old, they will start to learn to make fire by friction. By rubbing two sticks together, creating friction, they will develop a coal. And they'll blow this coal into fire using a tinder bundle. <laughs> They've got their own little hand drills right here and they'll spin them inside of um, baobab. This is a baobab seed right here. And what happens is they end up heating it up and it forms an ember inside here, which is kind of easy. They don't have to transfer any of the coal or anything and they just put their uh, tinder right inside the, the, uh, the baobab seed. That's amazing. Great way for kids to learn the technique and easy way for them to get fire. As soon as a Hudza kid is old enough to walk, they will learn to shoot a bow. They will practice almost daily, which soon turns them into a very good shot. They will learn all the skills necessary to make bows and arrows by making bow strings from animal skins, collecting feathers from a variety of birds for their fletchings. Knife handling skills are crucial to carve bows and arrows. They'll also use fire to heat straighten these. By about seven years old, the average Hudza boy will feed themselves by hunting and foraging. Due to the smaller size of their bow and arrows and the limited killing power, they will often shoot birds and other small game. The excitement is contagious when the kids are allowed to join the adults on a hunt. Smoking cannabis before a hunt is a ritual that all the adults partake in. Kids are not allowed to partake until they get to an older age. Pipes, leaves, and modern day rolling paper are all the ways that they will smoke the cannabis. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> Look how excited the dogs are getting. <laughs> The kids are just beaming with excitement and energy and hunt every single thing that they can possibly fling an arrow at. Most of the adults, having far more experience, will often turn down small game to pursue larger game. Everything they shoot gets tucked under their belt as storage until they get back to camp. And they will eat absolutely everything they shoot, include or, including all of the organs. They are locked on and in pursuit of a very tough target, the squirrel. Squirrels move a lot throughout the trees and never stay still. They're a very hard animal to shoot with a narrow. This is where hunting in numbers has its benefit. The more hunters there are, the more arrows can be flung, higher chance of getting the animal. Squirrel knows the deal and he keeps jumping from tree to tree, not giving them an easy shot. They will often throw rocks or branches up at the squirrel to push him into a spot that's more open and easier for them to see. I think the squirrel is getting the better of them, but it's just so unbelievable to just watch the communication, the interaction and the focus from these kids trying to hunt a squirrel. You know, so that they can uh, feed themselves and their parents like they did yesterday. They very quickly abandon the squirrel hunt when they spot a bush baby up in the top of an acacia tree. This is prime eating for Hudza kids.
Finally, they have their reward for the pursuit and will eat well tonight. So the, the adults kind of don't really waste time with taking shots at birds or squirrels, anything small, but the youngsters are just after them all day. Um, and uh, it's really good for their, their target practice. You know, they get, they can hit birds consistently. It proves to the adults that they can hunt larger game. The boys have been doing very well on this day of the hunt. They will certainly have some good meat for the evening. As you can see by his stride, he's very proud of himself. Witnessing moments like this leaves no doubt in my mind that this is how boys are meant to live. There are times when the adults just simply cannot help themselves, especially when it comes to a bush baby hunt. This is 100% a group effort and the competition is on who will make the killing shot. Once the kill shot is made, the second challenge is to try and recover the animal out of the tree. So often the bush babies will get stuck up in these acacia trees because there's so many thorns, they don't fall down very easy and they grip onto the branches so they, they have to uh, climb up and retrieve them many times. The bush babies are extremely tough animals and sometimes they'll have to get up in the top of the trees just to make that final kill shot even after it's wounded. Oh, he bit him right there. He fell out of the tree right there. Arrow wasn't him and he bounced. He actually literally hopped. Mateo got him, but uh, grabbed him, but he bit him. All right, in the belt and on we go. <laughs> Honey harvesting is a much needed replenishment of fuel for the body during, in between, or after a good hunt. We got some honey. <laughs> Excited discussions usually ensue after a hunt. Hunting is their identity. Hunting is their lifestyle. Hunting is how they survive. So they like eating the honey and the lava. The dogs. So the dogs uh, do get some honey each time. And as usual, after harvesting honey, the energy is high, and everyone's ready to just get up and go. The Hadzabi have a variety of challenges. Loss of their traditional hunting lands being one of the primary concerns. I encourage you to please help the Hadza and their children preserve their lands by donating to the Drobo Fund.